Our sun's been a snoozing for the past couple days, but it looks like not anymore. Big flares are back. Those stories are more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.com edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Our sun has been snoozing over the past couple days, but it looks like it's beginning to wake up. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we had been watching region 3296 as it rotated to the sun's far side. This was that big flare player from last week, and we're glad to see it go. Since then, there hasn't been all that much on the Earth-facing disk, a couple filament eruptions here and there, but nothing really substantial, except when you look down in the southeast, off of the east limb, over the past couple days, there's been a region that you're beginning to see its activity. In fact, just as it begins to really capture our attention, wham, right there, it fires off a near X-class flare. In fact, this likely was an X-class flare. It's just that it was occulted, meaning that it wasn't completely in view. On Earth's day side, it actually did cause a near R3-level radio blackout for a short while. And this region, believe it or not, we have been expecting it. As we take a look at our JSOC HMI, my helioseismology far side viewer, you can actually see this is region 2385 from the last rotation, and it's actually been growing on the sun's far side. You can see it in gold. See that big black dot? That thing continues to grow. That's this region, and it means that it's actually been firing off lots of solar storms and probably big flares on the sun's far side. So we're expecting a lot of activity from it here over the next couple weeks. So amateur radio operators, get ready for some radio blackouts. Now, on top of that, we have just over the last day, whoosh, right there, we had a filament launch. This is a, a filament that looks like it's going to be a solar storm that goes to the southwest of Earth, so we're not really anticipating much impact from it. It may graze us right around the 20th or 21st, but probably not going to give us all that much to look for. We're going to have to wait until some bigger players rotate into Earth view. In fact, as we take a look at our sun's far side, this is stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a tiny bit from the side. You can see on the east limb in the south, that is that new region that is rotating into Earth view. And you can see when it launched that, that big solar flare on the uh, 16th, it also launched a far-sided solar storm. And that was actually involving other regions on the far side. It's kind of hard to tell. But you can see that big, massive halo. That is a far-sided halo. Don't worry, it's not Earth-directed. But that means that there are other regions on the far side that are big solar storm producers. Plus, you can see in the north, there's also some brightening here. This is another region that's going to be rotating Earth's side. So Aurora photographers and amateur radio operators, get ready. The snooze is over. We're definitely going to be seeing more solar flares and more solar storms here over the next two weeks. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase on our way to a first quarter. And by the 22nd, the moon will be only about 8% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, or I don't know, maybe some meteors from the Lyrids or the Aquarids, those showers are still active. Now is your perfect chance. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we don't have any real Earth-directed solar storms right now other than that potential grazing passage that could give us something late on the 20th, possibly into the 21st. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 20% chance of a minor storm somewhere around the 20th to the 21st, and then things will quiet down. So it really doesn't look like there's all that much activity. Now at mid-latitudes, the story's pretty much the same. We're expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 10 to 15% chance of active conditions. But things for the most part are pretty quiet, we do have one filament that we're watching that's going through the Earth strike zone right now, and if it launches, it could be an Earth-directed solar storm. But right now, it really looks like we're not going to be seeing any big activity until next week.
Switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are having a quiescent sun for the most part. We've only got one big flare player in Earth view, but more are coming. As such, we are sitting at about the 140s for solar flux right now, but likely that's going to start really ramping up. We could see ourselves in the 170s by the end of next week. Likewise, we are also sitting at minor noise right now on the radio bands, but that will likely ramp up to a moderate noise level as more of these regions rotate into view. We are seeing about a 25% chance from NOAA of the M-class uh, flares. That's at an R1 to R2 level radio blackout. And we even have about a 5% chance of X-class flares at an R3 level radio blackout over the next few days. That again is likely going to continue to ramp up as more of these regions rotate into view. Amateur radio operators on Earth's day side, yes, the noise is going to get worse. And you are going to have to deal with these periodic blackouts uh, easily over this next week and possibly in through next week. And emergency responders, you know, if you're dealing with amateur radio operators and working with them, you're just going to have to understand that this is going to be the way it's going to be on Earth's day side. So hang in there. Hopefully things aren't going to be too bad. Switching to our radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. Right now, we are actually in elevated conditions. This was due to a small radiation storm being launched during that uh, at near X-class flare back on the 16th. We are sitting at the D2 minor level, but that's also an S0 level right now. We're not at the an official radiation storm. It's just elevated, but things are going to be quieting down over the next couple days, and we probably will be back at D1 normal conditions, possibly by the 19th and definitely into the 20th. Uh, luckily, we only have about a 5% chance of an S1 to S2 level radiation storm, but this these chances might rise as this week continues and more regions begin to rotate into view. So pilots, please be aware those ICAO advisories are out. So if you want to factor them into your flight plans, they are a good way to keep yourself aware because these radiation storms do affect the poles and it could cause problems for polar aviation. So the space weather this week is definitely picking up. We don't have any Earth-directed solar storms at the moment, other than a glancing blow from a solar storm that was launched to the west of Earth. Now, it might give us a little bit of something around the 20th to the 21st, but Aurora photographers, it may not even be enough for you to notice. So you're just going to have to wait for about a week when some of these active regions rotating into Earth view right now kind of rotate to a place where they can actually send us Earth-directed solar storms. So just hang in there. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, radio blackouts are on the menu. We do have that one active region that, that's now rotated into Earth view, and there will be others that follow suit. So expect R2 to possibly R3 level radio blackouts on Earth's day side periodically. And this could last easily over the next couple weeks before things settle down. And expect that noise on the bands to ramp up because that's going to be an issue. Now, uh, GPS users, well, you're kind of in the same boat. Uh, the Radio blackouts are definitely an issue for your GPS reception, especially near dawn and near dusk. So take that into consideration when you fly. And if you happen to be a pilot, be sure to check those ICAO advisories, because right now we are in a very small radiation storm, but radiation storms could definitely be an issue. So we have those polar cap issues uh, that, that occur during that period. And of course, those radio blackouts are not good for comms. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.